the City of Jackson's Visitors and Conventions Commission reminds us to shop locally. From our wide selection of national retail chains to our unique downtown shops, Jackson is a great place to spend the day, catch an exhibit, or grab some lunch or dinner from one of our national restaurant chains or local eateries. Spend the night in one of our national chain hotels. No matter what your plans, the City of Jackson and Jackson County in the rolling hills of Southern Ohio is a great way to spend the day. Just a friendly reminder from the City of Jackson Visitors and Conventions Commission. At Vinton County National Bank, we believe in supporting the areas where we live and work. Now, we'd like to honor those who also serve our communities. Our new Community Champions account is especially for first responders, veterans, active military, and anyone employed in the fields of healthcare or education. This account offers rewards, discounts, and other benefits to those who give so much to others. Vinton County National Bank, rewarding those who serve. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a wonderful morning right here on Main Street TV, where we have a super special show for you today, and our good friend Jeremiah Shaver is in the house, and Jeremiah has done a lot of work compiling a best of episode that we're going to do right here on uh, the show. Yeah, so this morning, Jen, we're going to be doing my top 10 most viewed Facebook videos from 2023. We uh, did this last year, my yeah. first year here, and uh, we, we sat down, like you said, and compiled and went back through all the videos from the last 12 months and uh, tried to figure out what all the top viewed videos were by the viewers that follow my news personality page. That's right. And uh, this morning, we're going to work our way through those. We're going to start with 10 and work our way to one. And uh, it's just going to be a neat little sh look back show from the year. And like I said last year, and we talked about this, it may not be videos that we think are the best or anything, but it's the videos that yeah. are most viewed by by you uh, all the out community. there. So, yeah. So you all got to pick this, right? Basically. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll go video by video, and we'll uh, talk about each video after it shows. So we'll go ahead and start with number ten. <laughs> Green hand to get that palm at a 350 letter to your now 50 letter now that you want to buy now 350 letter to your now 50. I got 300 to your now 50 now. What do you get 50 palm at a now? Do you want to buy them at a now 350 letter to your now 50? Sold them out 300, 300, 300. Do they do resell on the turkey? Five and a quarter, five twenty five, five twenty five. I, you're with you, Riley. Five twenty five. I have sold it for five hundred dollars. Fourteen, fourteen. I'm with Chris at thirteen dollars a pound. Fourteen, fourteen, fourteen. How about thirteen and a half? Thirteen fifty. What about a fifty fifty? I'm right here. Thirteen fifty, thirteen fifty. Now, where do you give on that kind? Give me 275. I want 275. Now 85. 85. What do you get? 85. Palm and a nine. 285. What do you get? 85. Now three dollar. I want three dollar. Here now three. What do you get? Palm and a nine. You want to buy it? Now three ten. Now quarter. I got three ten. What do you get? Quarter. Nineteen dollars for Brianna Hayburn. Her last year, as I mentioned a moment ago. Yeah. 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 Overall showman, pretty fancy. Ivy, how oh, and I take a look on here. We go and hammer it out here. I want three dollars where I want three dollars here now. We get reserve champion. All oh, right, would you get three dollars here? Would you get three? Would you get it your way? Riley, two dollars, two dollars, two dollars for the final dairy steer. Hey, finally, good animal. That's pretty. What are you gonna be that kind there? Give me about two and go. Hey, two dollar bit of can about a two dollar bit of bottle, two dollar bit of bottle, two dollar bit of bottle, two. That two where? Why not? That two little bit. Look at that animal. That two little bit. All right, Jen. So there was number ten. That was the Jackson County Fair livestock sale. That was back in July of this mm -hmm. year. That video got nine thousand nine hundred views. Wow. A um, little bit about the sale. Um, what brought this one into the top ten? Uh, you know, it was, was the view count, obviously. But that video was on for. Um, I want to say. 
I, you know, the livestock sale started a little after three and ran to 1130 on that night that they had the livestock sale. So eight they and a half hours short. <laughs> they are not short as about an eight, uh, eight and a half hour time frame. And I was live for it. I had two videos. Um, the first video was on probably maybe an hour. And then the second part was on for probably over six, close to seven hours. Wow. So altogether, it was probably eight hour video. But there was 343 animals that yeah. they ran through the 2023 Jackson County Livestock Sale. So, you know, and that's just such a... You know a little bit about the sale. I do. Yeah. Um, it's just such a bittersweet thing for the kids. You know, they've worked so hard on the projects. And obviously, at the end of the day, know the outcome. And that is to sell your animal um, right? and whatever. But you can't help but get attached as well. And there's a lot of tears that night. Uh it's just kind of sad, right. but it's part of the circle of life, right? I know, I know you being the horse queen, <laughs> um, brought horses, but did you bring other livestock? Yeah. No, I never no. did. So mm-hmm. you probably didn't get to participate in the sale, but were you no. down there during the sale? At yeah, all? yeah, yeah. Well, and a lot of it probably had, had to do friends with, that were selling animals. Well, I did, and a lot of it had to do too with, um, you know, dad owning the radio stations and doing, oh, yes, you know, he He's and praying. John yes. would broadcast the whole thing live right. and, and all that. So I was down there a lot for that as well. So yeah, I got to spend a lot of time at the fair during the livestock sale. And again, it's just such a bittersweet evening it is um, a, lot of, a lot of 4 H's get a little emotional yeah i mean i get attached to the to their animals i'll just be honest with you i couldn't do it that's why i never took livestock i couldn't there's no way yeah so. i couldn't i could not do it all right so, so uh let's move on to number nine but kudos to the ones that do yes number nine <sighs> Hello and good afternoon. My name is Jeremiah Shaver and I'm a multimedia journalist with The Telegram. I'm broadcasting live here along State Route 32. I'm right across from a, I believe this to be a business uh, called Pine Ridge Log Furniture. Uh, You can see it along State Route 32 between Jackson and Waverly. Uh, The business address is on Van Fawcett Road here in Scioto Township. A call came across. it's been a little bit since the call came across about a fully involved structure. When I arrived on scene, fire had just spread throughout the entire structure here um, at this residence along Van Fawcett Road. Uh, multiple fire departments are on scene um, working to try to do, uh, at this point, I'd say overhaul. Uh, since I've been here, I've watched the fire burn throughout the building. Um, the roof on the side that you're watching i watched it collapse and um, still a lot of heavy smoke as i was coming up 32 from jackson you can see you can see just a plume of smoke above this structure here uh, in Scioto township and uh, once again i believe that this is a uh, maybe an amish business by the name of pine ridge log furniture that is the uh, sign that is next to the road here. So, uh, multiple fire departments out here working, um, trying to work on this structure, but it is just burning out of control. Uh, we'll try to stay live for a little while longer so you guys can uh, watch as the firefighters work on this scene. So, Jen, this is a wow. video from Friday. Yeah, I mean, just so like, over who the weekend, knew? Most it made recent. it. Yeah, over it was Friday, and over the weekend, it got enough views to make it into the top ten. So, I had to rearrange my top ten a little bit. You know, I know exactly where that is. You know, if you go toward the the Henderson's Arena area or out to Marvin's Gardens or towards Cincinnati, uh, everybody knows where that Pine Ridge Log uh, Furniture Building is, and. Um, Unfortunately, you get wood and wood making materials yes. um, together, and then if you get a fire started, there's not much you can do, to, you can do. to get that thing stopped. And uh, as you could see in kind of the time lapse video that you yes, did there, yes, so that, um, that video was 
it was sped Oof. up. It made it into a time lapse because it was that is wild. I was there about thirty minutes or so, and I think I cut it down to twenty, and then time lapsed it down to two minutes. So. Oh man, that was um, that's a scary, scary. Now tell me, no one was injured. Please tell me. I believe nobody was injured. Okay. I do have the story here that um, Telegram editor Pete Wilson was able to get a hold of the fire chief over the weekend. Okay, was able to touch base with him, and uh, we can go through the story here. Sure. So you're hearing all this for the first time here. It was an Amish-owned furniture business, and it was called Pine Ridge Log Furniture, mm -hmm. located at 2843 Van Fawcett Road. And um, there were five fire departments from two different counties that responded just after 3 p.m. to that fire, and that happened late afternoon on Friday, December 15th, there in Scioto Township, here in Jackson yes. County, Ohio. And... Um, the fire, which occurred during working hours, spread quickly, and the structure could not be saved, as you can see there from the uh, uh, time very lapse. Much so. um, employees were able to escape the fire with no injuries. Good. So there we go on that. Um, however, the large structure, which included production and retail area for wood and furniture and its contents, were considered to be total losses, mm. according to the Sayuda Township Volunteer Fire Department Chief. That's Aaron Lee Master. That's a big building out there, It is. Too. It was a big building. Um let me see here. Uh, Lee Master stated that the fire was accidental. It occurred in the furniture making process. Um, it says when a torch ignited a fire that may have come in contact with varnish, which acted as an accelerant, causing the fire to get out of control quickly. It says the log building was totally engulfed in flames when firefighters arrived and they were not able to attack the fire from the inside due to the trusts already giving way. Um, and like I said, they had multiple fire departments mm -hmm. out there. It says that there was approximately 25 firefighters. Wow. That battled well, you that blaze. You could see a lot of folks there. You could see a lot of activity. Fires, yeah. And they used around 20,000 gallons of water. Oof. And they were on scene for approximately three hours. Um, it says the firefighters were able to save a storage building situated about 12 feet away from the building. It sustained only minor damage to a portion of the metal surface, and there were no injuries to firefighters. Was there any residential uh, structure out there? There was. It, there is. Say? There is a res. I could see it from the road. There was. A, I believe there's a residential structure. Um, you could see it in the. Well, yeah, you probably can't see it in that video, but you can but see it in some of my not, pictures. Not it, it was far enough away okay. from Good. the business that it it would have been okay. Um. So that video, that video over the weekend got 10,500 views My as of last night. I'm sure it's probably gained more since last probably, night. Probably, yes. That's what I wrote down as of last night. So then I had to rework my top 10 and bump a video because of how that um, just gained so much attention over the weekend there. Well, such a devastating fire it um, is. for a local business. Well, but... fun, funny thing, um, I was at church Sunday morning and... Somebody came up to me and was telling me about this, and they said they had come out through there. They already have the area cleared, and I've already started to rebuild. So that's Amish. Somehow story. that does not surprise that, me. It as does well, not so. surprise me either. I've not <laughs> gone out through there to see it myself, but somebody said they come through there, and it looked like it had already been cleared, and they've already started to rebuild. Wow. Okay. So I'll have to take a drive out through there, yeah. maybe today, and uh, take a look when I get off and see hmm. if they're out there working. That's wild. Yeah. But. You know, going to rebuild the business and, right. and um, we will move on, yes. right? So we'll have complete coverage of this. Uh, should be in our Wednesday edition of the Telegram. And uh, you had all the information there from that. So let's yep. move on to number eight. Hello and good evening. My name is Jeremiah Shaver. I'm a multimedia journalist with the Telegram. I am broadcasting live. Um, out here at a subdivision along uh, Beaver Pike, along Beaver Pike in Jackson County, Ohio, where there is a large structure fire. Got multiple fire departments on scene.
Oh, another, another fire. Another, Jeremiah. I know. Another sad one there, Jen. Um, this one was from February of this year. Uh, it was viewed 10,600 times. And um, that was that was a fire there on the west side of town. Um, as I was telling you off there, there I, I believe uh, me and the family was out for a walk. It was mm-hmm. not seasonably warm yeah. that day. And um, we were down on, like, I don't know if it was South Street or getting towards South Street. Maybe we was walking Portsmouth to South. Mm-hmm. And we kept seeing smoke. Yes. And I remember Telegram editor Pete Wilson called me and said, hey, um, he was, I don't know if he was at dinner, like in Wilson or at an obligation in Wilson. I can't yeah. remember. And it said, hey, have, did, did you hear any fire trucks? And I said, actually, we're out for a walk. And I did. So I'm starting to hear fire trucks. I yeah. can see smoke. And um, so we, you know, walked back to the car and all got in and drove out that way. And that's that's when we found back in that. It's kind of like a cul-de-sac. Yeah. It's like, across from Westview yeah, Elementary. Yeah, it is. Um, the very, it was like almost the very last house back there because it was quite a walk. Very devastating. It was. There. It was very devastating. Total loss. Uh, very, very sad. It was in the um, early evening hours of Wednesday, February 15th. I do remember. I remember driving. I was telling you I was driving down Main Street, and I was like, oh, something's bad so, yes. happening. Because I could see the smoke, and I was driving toward town on Main, and I was like, uh-oh. This yeah, is not good. The Jackson Fire Department got called at 5.38 p.m. on that Wednesday to a residence that was Bus and Vicki Haynes. The address was 123 Elm Street. There in that um, Jackson Run subdivision, as you can see from the video, there it was pretty destructive fire. Very, very sad. Fire. Um, it says that the uh, you know by the time the firefighters arrived, just minute later, minutes later, the one story structure was almost completely engulfed in flames out there. They had several fire departments respond to, as you can see there in the um, in the video, and um, like I said, you could see, uh, and I even had in the story there was reports. Of smoke being seen from miles away yep. for that residence. Um, but it was declared, uh, Jackson Jackson Fire Chief Dave Channel had declared the structure and its contents total losses, and only a charred shell of the house had remained within an hour of when the fire started. So it was, um, and it, it got so hot that siding on a house, mm-hmm. neighboring house, I guess, had melted mm-hmm. even. But um, it, was a, it was a pretty pretty devastating one. Um, and I remember I did not shoot that one live. I wasn't able to shoot that one live. I don't know if it was because of service or there, there was some reason why I didn't shoot that one live. I had recorded it and uploaded it. Okay. And it still got that still v- got kind of viewership. Views, yeah. I was, you know, you never know when you upload something. But there were 29 firefighters from four departments that battled that residential fire there. And... Um, it says Channel reported that two different firefighters had become ill at the scene and were treated at the scene by Jackson County EMS during that incident sure. and then taken to Holzer Medical Center for further treatment. Um, other emergency responders called to the scene included, and they had you know the electric department out there, gas department, as it normally is with fires like this, to make sure those utilities are shut off. Absolutely. So. Yep. But, um, it, takes an, it takes an army to battle a fire. It does. And I, I have here um, the calls as well. Let me rip that so I can see. Uh, Channel reported the flames quickly spread throughout the house after a grease fire ignited in the kitchen. So that's um, gotcha. That's what started that out there. And it does say that the, um, the owner of the house and uh, the company along with the Haynes family did have insurance. So very good. All right. So let's move on to number seven. Hello and good afternoon. My name is Jeremiah Shaver. I'm a multimedia journalist with the Telegram. I'm broadcasting live here on Main Street in downtown Jackson, Ohio, where local fire departments responded to Wendy's here in Jackson for a call of a fire. Uh, there was uh, smoke showing. Uh, they, they seem to be focused on this um, left corner of the building there where it says serving breakfast there on the window as kind of the area where everybody seems to be gathered. Uh, don't know the extent of the damage or anything like that. The fire is out and under control. Um, Jackson Fire Department is here. Wilson, Wilson Fire Department just showed on scene. And Liberty Township Fire Department is here as well. Also on scene, you have the Jackson Police Department, 
the city of Jackson electric department and Jackson County EMS was on standby briefly, but the, uh, the fire, the fire is under control here. You can see, uh, the building was evacuated. I did hear scanner traffic for that. Uh, they evacuated the building on my way over here. And at one point they said that there was smoke showing from the building. Uh, must be the must be the wall there that faces the street because that's where everybody's kind of focused. All right, so for anybody that's just tuning in, we are at Wendy's and we're inspecting the inside wall there along that window inside the building here at Wendy's. They seem to be focusing on this area inside. Um, this, is, this is the front of the building that faces Main Street is where their focus appears to be. Uh, the fire is out. But they're, but they're doing their inspections here, trying to determine, I guess, what happened or what went wrong. All right, so there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Let these guys uh, get back to what they're doing here. Uh, everything is out and under control. All right, so we're on the same trend here. Another fire, Jen. This one wasn't as devastating, though. No, this was uh, just carelessness. Yes. From um, a cigarette butt. From a cigarette butt. Don't so the, flip them out on the... Into the in landscape. The, into the landscaping. Mulch burns. Yes, it does. Yes. Especially after it's been as dry as it was yes. then. Yes. Um, this happened in July. It was viewed 11,500 times. And um, I'll read you the little story that I had written back in July. Uh, Thanks to quick actions of employees at Jackson, fast food restaurant received minor exterior fire damage. And this was on Wednesday, July 26th at 3.49 p.m. The Jackson Fire Department was dispatched to a call of fire with smoke showing at Wendy's of Jackson. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the fast food chain is located there at 480 East Main Street in Jackson. Everyone inside the restaurant was evacuated. By the time firefighters had arrived on scenes on the scene, employees had used a fire extinguisher to put out the fire, which was outside the building. As we said at the start of talking about this, um, Jackson Fire Chief Dave Channel had told the Telegram that it appeared the fire had began in the mulch bed in front of the restaurant and had spread to the front wall of the building, which had seducus. I just said it a minute ago. Stucco, 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 stucco walls. Well, it's yeah, it's called it's like drive it, and it's like foam basically. Yeah, it's like a foam so it's padding. gonna yeah, it's going to. And so it had it had caught fire, um, but Channel said that someone must have thrown a cigarette into the mulch bed as they were leaving the drive-through yep. and. That's Don't what do that. Caught fire. So, but luckily nobody was injured. And um, they, you know, as you see in the video there, you could see the firefighters inspecting the walls to make yes. sure everything was out before they um, called it all clear. So that was number seven. Let's go to number six. <laughs> Hello and good morning. My name is Jeremiah Shaver. I'm a multimedia journalist with Telegram. I'm broadcasting live out here along US Route 35. And what you're looking at this morning is a uh, we got a we got a semi there. It's a Peterbilt semi. And um, so this morning, little little bit of backstory on the semi here. 
uh, this morning at 9.38 a.m. Um, law enforcement you know, received a bolo about the semi that was reported stolen out of Greene County. And um, that semi was later located in Ross County. That's when a pursuit began in Ross County. Uh, law enforcement followed the semi from, or not Ross County, sorry. The semi was reported stolen at 9.38 a.m. in Greene County. Pursuit started in Fayette County. Went through Fayette County, Ross County, and came to a close here in Jackson County. The Ohio State Highway Patrol um, deployed stop sticks outside Richmondale and Ross County. You can see uh, the semi has um, some blown tires there. And the semi was traveling 35, was traveling 35 eastbound. And as you can see, it come into the median and into the westbound lanes of U.S. Route 35. The, uh, there was a tow truck out here. I think they are going to try to uh, get the scene cleaned up. They're traveling towards Chillicothe this morning. Today is, I believe today is Sunday, July 16th. The westbound lanes of US Route 35 are currently reduced to one lane, but I'm sure when they start um, cleaning up the scene here that the westbound lanes will probably be closed for a period of time. Um, when I first got out here, there was at least seven law enforcement units on scene. There was a mix between the High State Highway Patrol and the uh, Jackson County Sheriff's Office. I just wanted to go live and give you guys a update of what was happening out here. I'll uh, probably take off here soon. That's all I know at this time. They did um, take a, they did detain a male individual uh, from the semi and uh, we'll hope to get more details as information is released. So once again, for anybody that's just now. So Jen, that's number six. That might go down as <laughs> one of the most bizarre stories I've ever heard in my life. That one was uh, wild. It was a, uh, so it was a quiet Sunday morning. As I recall it, I was at yeah, home. And, it uh, was. I remember uh, Jamie and I were driving to Chillicothe and saw like that whole thing unfolding. And we were like, what is happening? Uh, and then yeah. got here the next day and I was like, oh, yeah. So this <laughs> dude uh, stole a semi. OK, he did. Um, so this happened. It was Sunday, July 16th, and it was viewed 14,000 times. Um, so it was a it was a Cedarville man. And um, he is he has since been sentenced uh, following that pr uh, pursuit this uh, this summer. Um, he was sentenced to 18 months in prison and had his driver's license suspended for five years after he I'd took say. law enforcement on a two county uh, pursuit. So he it started in Ross County um, and ended in Jackson County. The pursuit did, and. Um, his name was Stephen Newkirk, 44, of Cedarville. He'd appeared in the Ross County Common Plea Court in October of this year where he pled guilty to a third-degree felony of failure to comply to an order or signal of a police officer. <laughs> That's an understatement. Yes, and um, a fourth-degree felony of receiving stolen property. He was sentenced in late October to 12 months on count one and six months on count two. And then, like I said before, he had his driver's license suspended for five years. Um, but this all started on Sunday, July 16th. I remember I was at home and had somebody message me and say, hey, there's like an out-of-control semi driving down He's just 35. driving backwards down the, down the highway on the wrong uh, side of the yeah, road. Yeah, at one point he was driving Normal into stuff. incoming traffic on 35 there. And um, But he had, he had stolen the semi in... Um, to see here 
I just, it was in Greene County. That's not really very inconspicuous when you it's steal an awful a big, semi. It's an awful big target. Yeah. yeah. Like, as we said, you know, steal a nice little Honda Civic that's gray that, you know, looks like every other car on the on the highway. Don't steal a semi. Yes. It's kind of obvious. Yeah. So, so he stole it in Greene County, and they started... I guess caught up to him and started chasing him. It was somewhere in Ross County. Yep. And then it ended up ending there in Jackson County. Yes. Um, there were at times Very that he crazy. reached speeds of 90 miles per hour in the semi. And there was a number of law enforcement units involved. At some point during the situation, they had used stop sticks. Mm-hmm. They're outside of, I believe it was in Richmondale. Uh, to help slow the rig down. So you can see in the video there when I zoomed in that some of the one of the at least one of the front yes. pairs of tires. Because I remember have. driving by saying, Why? I wonder how that tire got flat. Gone. Like what yeah. What is happening? He was just on rims there on the one side. So nuts. But um anyway that, that story has kind of been put to bed and uh they they did take him into custody there without incident. So I'd say so. So that was number six. Let's move on to number five. Hello and good morning. My name is Jeremiah Shaber and I'm a multimedia journalist with The Telegram. I am broadcasting live here in Jackson where this morning the Jackson Fire Department was dispatched to Speyside Bourbon Cooperage, which you can see behind me here, for a report of fire and pipes uh, that are along the roof of this building here. Um, I did at one point hear that the roof was melting due to the, I don't know, the heat of the fire and the pipes, I guess. Um, there were multiple fire departments um, requested for mutual aid. You have the Jackson Fire Department on scene, Jackson County EMS. Um, you also have uh, Liberty Township, uh, Colton Volunteer Fire Department, and I do believe Wilson Fire Department is also making their way here to the scene. I have no other information at this time, but we'll, we'll let you guys uh, watch the scene here. Seems like they have finally gained access uh, and opened up part of this pipe here. You can see smoke coming out of the pipe there on the far end here, right here. Must be the pipe that's affected. Seems like they're having a meeting right now. Uh, down here in the lower parking lot. You can see all the uh, employees gathered around. Um, must be having some kind of meeting. Well, you can see water coming out of that pipe there. You can see water coming out of that pipe there. It looks like they're washing out the debris. It's hard to see in the video because I'm so far away, but you can see uh, it looks like a stream of water coming out the end of that pipe where the smoke was once coming out. Uh, the fire department must have gained access to the other end of the pipe and is washing the pipe out, thus putting the fire out that was in the pipe. There was a fire and a pipe inside the building, but that one had been extinguished as well. They were saying that some smoke had gotten to the building. So there's fire department, the firefighters in the building working on that as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. 
uh, Jackson Fire Chief Dave Channel just radioed that the fire uh, is under control. So the fire is out here at Speyside Bourbon Cooperage. So back to the fire theme there, Jim. Yeah. Lots of good out fires. outcome for that one. Though. Every, yeah, Not, good outcome for that one. About as good as you could possibly. But again, you're talking about a a factory full of dried wood. Yes, so, so could have gone terrifying. very could have gone very badly yes. as yes. well. Um, so that happened this past month in November, uh, viewed sixteen thousand six hundred times. And what you were seeing there, and I was talking about that was Jackson Speyside Bourbon Cooperage Plant here in Jackson. And um, it was on Thursday, November 2nd, there was a report of a fire in the pipes. Um, the fire was reported at 6.58 a.m. And I remember I was laying in bed and I kept hearing fire trucks. And you thought, uh-oh. And I, I I thought it was somewhere out near you know where I live, which I live on the north side of town. Yeah. And this, you know, was out towards the south side of town. And um, I must, you know, the fire department's not too far. You know, I usually hear a lot of sirens when they go to the station. Sure. So maybe it was um, like trucks going into the station. Probably. Or it could have been trucks coming from Colton or Wells. Or, yeah. Coming there. But um, that was, uh, so they they do bourbon barrels there. Yes. And they use a lot of wood to yes. make those bourbon barrels. A lot barrels. of dried white oak out there. Yes. And they had um, multiple fire departments that were dispatched to the plant there. And, um as you can see in the video, you could, there, there, there were, there's pipes um, that are on top of the building, and yes. it's a it's a dust collection system. Yep. And what they believe happened was there had become a, um, I guess, like a blockage like or a, yeah, a clog. Yeah, kind of got clogged got up. Clogged there. up yeah. in the collection system, and um, one of the a simple spark from a piece of machinery known as a cutter head is believed to have start the fire. So when that, when it sparked, it got sucked up into that ventilation. And then because there was a blockage, that blockage caught fire. Right. And then, um, that's what started that fire in that system. Now it was pretty much contained to that system. Yes. And, um, as you can see in the video, they were able to cut out, um, the upper side of the pipe and then they were able to remove the lower side and they were able to wash out the debris and put out the fire. But they said when Thank they arrived on scene, that pipe was glowing red. That's how hot the fire That's was terrifying. Going, going inside there. So yeah. if that blockage would have come undone and made its way to, I guess, to the collection, because I think it's, yeah. it goes to like a bag house in the back of the building is where all the dust goes. So if it would have made it to that, they might have had a bigger fire on their hands. So, um, luckily, everybody was okay. Nobody was injured. So, we'll go ahead and move on to number four. Hello and good after or hello and good morning. My name is Jeremiah Shaver, and I'm a multimedia journalist with The Telegram. I'm broadcasting live here along State Route 93 between the village of Colton and the city of Jackson, where there is a number of law enforcement officers present at the residence here along State Route 93. A little background information. Um, last night, uh, this there was a lot of law enforcement at this exact same address. Uh, not exactly sure the address here on State Route 93, but this is um, where currently law enforcement is here. Um, we were told that they were searching for an individual considered to be armed and dangerous. His name is Brandon Denny. And uh, for probably the last, I don't know, half an hour to 45 minutes that I've been here on scene this morning, law enforcement has been announcing um, to, uh, I'm not sure if it's the residents or one of the structures here on the property, because there, there's a residence. I can see a camper. Uh, there's, there's a number of buildings as well. I'm not sure which uh, which structure they are announcing to, but they have been calling out Brandon's name, and they have had a um, female individual. I don't know if it's a relative, uh, has also been on the uh, loudspeaker calling out to Brandon, telling him that nobody nobody wants to hurt him. They just want him to come out. So I don't I don't know if they know for a fact that he's uh, held maybe held up in one of these structures or if. In Jackson, this is in southern Ohio for anybody watching outside of our listening area.
So um, we'll just continue to watch and wait and see uh, see what happens here. They, uh, seems like they have Brandon and walking him out. All right, Jen, so that was number four. That happened last month, November. It was viewed 35,300 times. A little scary there for a minute. I, it was. Um, so I was out at that for, it was like three hour standoff or something. Holy and moly. Um, I know I was out there for a long time because I shut the roadway down. So then I just <laughs> you got kind of stuck, out there, got stuck out there. So I just <laughs> went live and stayed live throughout the entire thing. Um, but what, what that was, was a, it was a manhunt and standoff of a male suspect that was considered to be armed and dangerous. He had, um, peacefully surrendered and this happened on Tuesday, November 7th. And he had surrendered to law enforcement officers and this, that, that residence was between Jackson and Colton. And, um, the night before the suspect was 38 year old Brandon Denny, he had fled fled from law enforcement officers the night before, which was Monday, November 6th. Um, after he was seen on video surveillance, stealing a handgun from a neighbor's parked vehicle. Uh -oh. So then a search had taken place and I had gone out the night before and there was helicopters in there and drones. And wow. I didn't feel safe to pull over anywhere because it was, you know, late when they were doing the search out there, but they never did find him. So they scaled back and just continued to patrol the area. And then at some point, they realized that he was in that residence, which I guess was a former residence of his. Okay. Um, he had recently, I guess, gotten out of prison, and um, they were just trying to peacefully get him out of there without any complications. Um, you could hear him on the loudspeaker several times when I was there announcing, you know, we just want you to come out of the structure and everything. Right. Everything's going to be okay. And um, they ended up getting him out, and it was after a three-and-a-half-hour standoff. Officers with SWAT gear were able to, um, with a search warrant in hand, approach the porch, and they were able to command him to come out, and he did come out, and they took him into custody. And you can see there at the end of the video where it said, look. Yeah, um, you best can outcome them. you could possibly yes. get for that yeah, no, kind of situation. There were no shots fired, and nobody died or anything like that. So, um, possible, very good outcome there. And um, he, they did find the pistol inside the residence. Oh. And... Um, he, he, you know, he did not have it on his person at the time of surrendering, but they did find the inside the residence that he had stolen from the night before. Mm. Um, I don't have any more information on Denny or what happened to Denny. Okay. I did check the court systems this morning. I knew originally they had his last name spelled one way and then spelled another. So uh -huh. I may need to check the other way that they had originally had it spelled. Sure. Because it came out that it was actually spelled one way, but not the way they had it released gotcha. when they were searching for him. So that was number four. Let's move on to number three. All right, the Jen. bear that took over Jackson. Yes, the black bear that came <laughs> oh to town. Oh my goodness! So that happened in June, and it was viewed. Lots now, of talk about that bear. <laughs> yes, I should have mentioned. Um, there was a couple of videos this year that wasn't was not shot by me, was shot by other people. Yes, and I had shared on my social media, and they just kind of took off. This is one of two. 
and it was viewed 52,700 times. Wow. That was a um, juvenile male black bear in a tree. Just something you just don't see every day something, around here. Something, thank goodness. Yes, <laughs> something that you don't see all the time. Um, that video was courtesy of the Jackson Police Department. And um, that black bear was spotted. It was, I think it was just outside of town here on, it was Mount Zion Road. It was like... Where in the world is the black bear today? Because there were just sightings right. everywhere and all over Facebook and, and that, whatever. Yeah, you could point, tell us he was traveling through. Yes, he was just traveling through the area. Yeah. Um, at one point, um, he was seen out on Burlington, yep. out near the hospital even, um, crossing the highway there. But there was multiple sightings over several days <laughs> there. And um, we had talked to Jackson County Wildlife Officer Ted Witham. Yes. And... Um, he said that he had received several reports of the black bear as well. And, um, you know, he just kind of narrowed it down to, you know, it's probably just passing. passing he was actually the found uh, on my neighbor across the street. Yes. Had I remember seeing that posted in their backyard. on their surveillance camera. And I was like, oh, it's getting real now. He's he's like across the street from my house. That's wild. Yes. But. Yeah. Jer Jeremy and Ashley Sturgill, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we had meant, we had talked to them and uh, actually had some yeah. information in the story about them having on the Savari lens camera. So, but um, that was that was all the rage there for a little while it was on social the media. Bear. It was all anyone was talking about. It was. So we'll go ahead and move on to number two. This is a double feature. <laughs> All right, we're going to get started. Uh, my name is Jeremiah Shaver. I'm a multimedia journalist with The Telegram. I am broadcasting live on U.S. Route 35. Uh, this is the exit ramp from U.S. Route, US Route 35 westbound. It's the exit ramp that you take to get up to State Route 32. Now, State Route 32, when you take this exit ramp, you can take it up and you can go left to Jackson or you can go right towards Wellston. That is where this crash is, and it is a mess. I was talking to Jackson Fire Chief Dave Channel. He told me that this exit ramp will be closed for some time. Usually on something like this, it goes for hours and hours. You can see the mangled guardrail there that it took out as it... They, the, when the scanner traffic came across for this, it called it a rollover semi-crash. This is the only, uh, only vehicle involved, no other cars involved, single vehicle commercial uh, crash here. You can see the semi uh, cab there on its side. And you can see the uh, trailer is completely on its top here and it was carrying some type of lumber. So it's a live look out here at this crash scene. Uh, crash happened sometime between We got some guys rolling out here. I'm guessing. Uh, you've seen the firefighters go running uh, back to their truck. They are off to respond to another incident. Not sure what the incident is. All right, I'm getting scanner traffic. You've seen the firefighters take off running back to their truck. They are heading to a report of a structure fire. They're heading to a report of a structure fire at a laundromat in town. Is what they're heading to. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up one more time. I'm going to go check this out and see what's going on. So U.S. Route 35, westbound. Uh, the exit ramp to State Route 32 is closed. Here goes the fire department. They got heavy smoke showing. Heavy smoke showing. Laundromat, Morton Street. All right, we're going to go check it out. We're going to go check it out. It's inside the city limits for Jackson. So we leave a crash and come to a fire. 
You can see heavy smoke showing. Heavy smoke showing from the laundromat. So for anybody that's tuning in, we just left a rollover semi-rig crash out on US Route 35 at the exit ramp and we have made our way in town. We're here at the city of Jackson where there is a working structure fire here at the Quick Clean Laundry Mat. Uh, multiple fire departments arriving on scene. You can see smoke showing from the building. This is located on Morton Street inside the city of Jackson here in Jackson, Ohio. I'm being told that uh, everybody everybody is out of the building and that there was flames uh, flame showing as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get off here uh, so I can grab a few photos. Uh, Telegram editor Pete Wilson's here, and we was having a chat uh, about the fire here. And um, I'd like to thank everybody that's been on and tuned in. And uh, it's been a been a heck of a news heck of a news afternoon here. Um, had a crash out on the highway, and then a structure fire. Uh, breaking news. Um, uh, I mean, it's just a news day for the newsman here. So, um, we'll go ahead and get off here. <laughs> a news uh, day for the newsman. It was. That was well, a, no, that was crazy. That, that one kind of speaks for itself. That um, all of that happened all at that same time. It like, happened all around the same time. Oh there. my gosh. Um, that happened. It was in August, and that video was viewed almost a half a million times. It had. 457,300 views on that video there. And I called a double feature because we start out as you seen at the semi and then you see me in the car and then you see me at the fire. Yeah. I mean, it was just and, like all um, of that happened at one time and that's, that's it did. everybody being at this at, at numerous <laughs> places at one time. Wow. Yeah. So that, that 18 wheel semi rig there, it lost control and just landed a return there on that exit ramp yep. from 35 to 32 and um i believe the individual just had like minor injuries yeah that was that. just a cleanup situation that was a cleanup you know situation yeah it was, he it was rough to clean it was up. it was um that was closed out there for about six hours yeah. that day and then as you saw me run in the firefighters as well um run to that fire that was the uh, laundromat here in jackson the quick clean laundry there on morton street mm -hmm. And um, I believe that laundromat still hasn't reopened, Jen. And that happened uh, back in August. I'm not sure if it will reopen. I don't know. I'll, I'll I have heard. to ask them. Yeah, when I haven't I see heard. Them. But maybe maybe we'll have to try to follow up on that. But um, your know, firefighters were out at that for some time, too. Um, they got the call at 448 and cleared the scene. We're on scene till about 730. So they were there for a while. Yeah. Um, I believe, let me see if it's said in here. I know there was heavy damage to the building. Um, I'm trying to see if it said what the uh, what started it or if we had. Uh, the, it says the cause of the fire was not immediately determined, but they speculated it was electrical or ga a gas mm -hmm. issue. Yeah, since you had all the washers and dryers in yeah. there. So, all right, we're running out of time, so we're going to move on to number one. Now, this video wasn't shot by me; it was uh, from school surveillance. Yes. So that's um, why it's kind of hard to see. But we tried to fix that. Uh, this time around, because when we originally showed it, it was kind of hard to see. So hopefully you'll be able to see it better this time. So number one.
Wow. All right, Jen. So, uh, so this number one um, viewed five point five million times on my Holy on my moly. Facebook page. This happened in November. Um, this is kind of a heroic video. Um, so it, it was kind of hard to see in the original video, and we zoomed it in the best we could, but it was still real grainy. What you had there was a little girl in pink was taking the dumper tray in the trash can. Yes. And while at the trash can, she became choked. She choked, yeah. food or something, and she's choking. And you can see several of the kids stop as they're dumping the trays, but nobody was getting any help. Well, a teacher's aide was going to dump a tray for her student, and that's when she realized that yes. that student Thank was choking goodness. and jumped into action. That teacher's aide was Vidalia Mercer, and um, they honored her at a Jackson City School Board meeting. Um, this this incident happened at Westview Elementary. It was a first grader. Uh, her name was um, Addie Tilly of Jackson, six years old. And as I said, she Such began to choke. Scary, scary yes, moment it is. Very for scary everybody. Because she was in the back of the room there, dumping her tray. The teachers were kind of scattered off, you know, and didn't yeah. didn't see that that was happening. I mean, when you have that many students. Oh yeah, I mean, kids are running around and talking, and it just would not be something that you would see right away. Right away, and yeah. um, I counted. Uh, it was probably somewhere between twenty five to thirty seconds that she was choking before somebody realized that. Um, you know, before, uh, you know, Miss Mercer there performed the Heimlich on her. Yes. But um, they, you know, everybody gave her a plaud um, at the school board meeting and the family had um, honored her as well. Uh, gave her all kinds of roses, like two big things oh, of roses. And I'd say. This thing <laughs> that, uh, that the, wow. the daughter and mother had made her that called her a hero. And um, it was it was just something, just something to see. Um, but that happened happened in November at Westview Elementary. But since then, they did mention at the school board meeting that the school has been working with the kid, elementary level kids to um, uh, come up with a sign. So uh, oh. they have like a, like a science, kind of something like this, That's I think. That's smart, that, yeah. Like the teacher Teach there, them to all get that. them attention yeah. to let them know they're choking. So that, That's um, really good. So kind of a feel, feel yeah. good, feel good oh. um, video from school surveillance to wrap up this year's top 10 most viewed videos from 2023. Jim. Real life hero right here. Real life hero. So, so good. Hope so you guys good. have enjoyed this look back at 2023 and uh, we'll plan to do this again next year. Been a, been a great year. Had a lot of videos with a lot of views <laughs> this year. Yes, you um, have. It's, it's been a heck of a year for 2023. Uh, before we sign off here, I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, we'll yep. throw it back to Jen here. All right. Well, thank you, Jeremiah. That was wonderful. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of times news is not good news. But most of the time, we come up with some pretty good outcomes for, for sticky situations. So thank you for doing all of that. And uh, we will see you right back here. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. And I'm going to send you guys off with a clip for tomorrow. All right, let's see here. Okay, so maybe I didn't go to Athens on Court. I thought I pushed Athens on Court. It's on Station Street. That's where we're Oh, this is Station Street. This is Court Street. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, the Porterhouse me. got us lost. I went to Court Street Coffee instead of, uh, well, Court, Court. Athens on Court. Um, court. Court and Bottle? Oh, in court. You put in quirky. <laughs> yeah. Um, there it is.